Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the developer relationship at Interchain. I, I, I coordinate a lot of work as well. Um, I'm also a musician uh, as a hobby. Uh, so I've been working closely with the B9 Lab on the developer academy, uh, the developer portal, uh, sort of with Cosmos Hub, and I write some specs for some of the front-end applications that we've been uh, building with other teams, and I sort of coordinate that work as well. Uh, I'm particularly quite interested in uh, in the Cosmos stack, and particularly how it um, how newcomers to the new developers to the space are sort of like experiencing that and, and what they need to learn. It's quite a lot to take in uh, when you're joining this uh, ecosystem for the first time, especially if you're new to blockchain in general. Uh, we were just talking about this with Max, like, you know, in Ethereum, you come in and you learn, really, uh, you learn Solidity and you can make your own application with Cosmos. It's, it's a bit more, you need to build your own chain, you need to build your own application, you need to understand the SDK, IBC, uh, Tendermint to some extent, and also Cosmos.js if you want to start building front ends. So um, when it comes to the uh, Cosmos stack, there's actually a lot of cool things that are actually being built, right? So more recently we had um, AuthC, we had Fee Grant, which AuthC allows you to like authorize other people uh, to do transactions on your behalf. Um, we also have the groups module, which is basically a way to do DAOs on chain uh, natively in the SDK. And then also stuff like interchain accounts, which allows a chain to create an account on another chain and act and interact on that chain natively. And these are all these really cool things that are being built, um, but um, we don't really know how to use them in the sense that you have to use the CLI uh, to just interface with these chains all the time. And so um, how can we make these tools more powerful? We have to create a good user experience for that, right? And how do you create a good user experience? You need to create some kind of a front end interface for these things. And how do you do that? Um, that's where we get to Cosm.js. So Cosm.js is, is just a, a, a library, TypeScript library that allows you to sort of like encode and decode uh, messages um, from your chain and allows you to sign transactions and a bunch more stuff. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, what I wanted to do with you all today is just sort of go over um, building a very simple uh, front end application, the simplest of, of all. This is basically similar to what you're actually be, gonna be doing this week. Um, like just you know, fetching some information about your wallet, um, um, getting the balance, si uh, connecting with Kepler, and sending a transaction. Um, so uh, we're just going to set up an Next.js app in Port Cosm.js. We're going to connect with the testnet. We're going to get some testnet uh, tokens, uh, connect to Kepler, and then send some tokens to the faucet address again. Uh, just want to say I'm definitely not like the the best TypeScript uh, wizard in the world or anything. I'm just uh, somebody who enjoys doing this uh, every once in a while. Uh, I'm particularly very passionate about uh, um, Cosm.js and bringing that to the people because I feel that this is sort of like, especially for people coming from Web2, this can be the entry point into the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need to build your own application, um, or your own chain. You can also very often just start with building a front end application for a smart contract or for an existing chain. And I think generally this is like the easiest way for Web2 developers to sort of get started on, um, in the Cosmos ecosystem. So I will now share my screen. And let me move a bunch of things around here. And here we go. If you want, you can follow along. I, I will be going a, a bit fast, um, but you know this is also being recorded, so you can just check it later. Um, let's see, can you all see my screen? It looks like you can, that's good. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, good, awesome. So um, yeah, we'll be going over Cosmic Um just before we get started, Cosm.js is like a, a very low level way of building uh, front-end applications. Um, it's, it's very, it's, it's like the lowest level. There are abstraction layers that have also been built. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit later um, that make that process a little easier. Um, we're starting with Cosm.js because we feel it's important as, an, as a chain developer that you understand what happens on the lower level. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just gonna run over that. We're just gonna create a next.js app basically um, that interfaces with Cosm.js. So, um, I have my working folder here, and I'm just going to create a, uh, a next.js app just like this. And it will prompt me to ask what the name for that is. And I'm just going to go create this cool Cosmos app. And wait till that's done. And this always takes longer than you want. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, here we are almost. And while this uh, runs, um, I wish there was a little elevator music. I should really set up like an, a plugin or something. When you have these moments, that you have a little 
Now the rate of music running. Is anyone here uh, coming from the Web2 space or is everyone here already super familiar with, uh, with Cosmos or blockchain in general? Feel free to shout in the chat if you're coming from Web2 or Web3. So it's good to know. Anyway, now that this is done, we're just going to go into our folder and we're going to Nice, from Web2, awesome. Uh, we're gonna come, we're gonna run the uh, the next.js app. So this is running, and let's check out our local host. And we have you know, our basic next.js landing page. All right. Um, now this is uh, this is all very rudimentary, and I think this should load. Yeah, cool. This is all very rudimentary, and so we're not gonna bother wasting any time. Um, with like an actual markup or anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy a um, uh, clone actually, like a front end that we already have. This is based on the same front end that um, was built for the for the developer academy, for the Interchain Developer Academy. We're just gonna copy the component uh, so that we don't have to do any sort of like markup and uh, not waste our time with that. So we're just gonna copy this here. Let's see how that's doing. All right. Of course, I did that in the wrong folder, but that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to copy the components folder here. That's all we really need. As we can tell now, we have a components folder here and a file called simple UI, UI.tsx. Now, this doesn't really load anything yet, but because our um, index.tsx is still this, this standard uh, next.js file. So let's just replace all of this. I'm just going to copy some text. Um, something that I prepared. Um, and basically, this just loads the simple UI component. That's all it does. Okay, so let me just go over what we have here. And I'm sorry for the uh, for the hold up here. So we just have a basic front end uh, that's calls to the chain ID. It checks, uh, it, it will potentially display our wallet, our address, or balance, and the tokens that we're sending. And um, has a send button and a connect to wallet button. And now it just shows us what to do. And I'll go briefly over the code here. Um, what this basically does, this is our component. It has a state. Uh, this is information that's important, the chain ID, um, our address, and these things. Um, it has a constructor that just sets the state. It has a bunch of functions um, or a bunch of ways to sort of like uh, check that you've input some data to the form, and then um, it updates the state. It has a function um, that when you click on the send button and when you click on the Kepler connect button, and then it just renders this into you know what we just saw. So this is uh, not that uh, particularly relevant. Um, Let's open the actual folder. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let's actually open the right folder. Cool. So um, what we now need to do is you need to actually sort of like import uh, Cosmo.js. Let me check the time real quick. So before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what Cosmic Gist really does, right? Uh, some context before we get started. So Cosmic SDK modules, they have messages and they have queries um, that are defined in proto buff as you've gone over now, as far as I'm aware. So every of these modules, they have specific messages and, and uh, queries that have types that need to be decoded and encoded. Um, and that happens on the on the SDK itself, of course. But in order for Cosmos to really do this effectively, it needs to understand what these proto files uh, mean, and it needs to convert them to TypeScript files. So most of these types are actually already generated for you when when it comes to like the basic um, SDK types, like sending tokens and stuff like that. Um, but if you build your own SDK modules um, or you create new queries or new messages inside these existing modules, you need to generate the types for that yourself, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, so Cosmos.js itself is sort of like a modular system. Uh, it has a bunch of packages. Some of these packages take care of uh, signing messages for you. Some of them take care of the encoding, um, the cryptography, Cosmolism in some sense. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them that you import. One of the main modules that we'll be using is called uh, Stargate. Um, this is a module that, that is, contains the client that is responsible for connecting to the chain and signing the messages that you'll be sending to the blockchain and interpreting some of these messages. It's, uh, it's called Stargate. Uh, because that was a really, really important update back when uh, the Cosmos Hub um, just connected to IBC at the first time. So that's what's called Stargate, uh, what's called the Stargate update. 
another important package for Cosmos is called encoding. Uh, this is, you know, as the name really suggests, um, it handles all the encoding so that your your front end application will understand the data that it gets. So, like the, the blockchain will send it data in some kind of a format, and then TypeScript doesn't really understand what a coin is, for example, right? Um, and that means to understand that the um, uh, that the address is a string, for example. Somebody needs to tell it that. So. Uh, we have to import these uh, modules uh, for these packages from Cosmos, but first we need to just install that. So let's uh, go back to the um, working folder and let's install Cosmos. And while that's installing, I'm just going to go ahead and import that as well into our component, just right here. And uh, what we're importing is the Stargate client, like I said, but also the Stargate client that actually signs transactions, so it can sign transactions, and also a type called coin, which is just a type to understand what a coin is, which contains a denom, uh, in this case, atom, and it contains uh, an, uh, it contains an amount, as far as I'm aware. Um, let's see. Now that should be installed. Good. And now we should connect to the testnet. So I guess most of you have already gone through this by um, the setting up a node tutorial in the training program. Um, I just want to give it like a quick overview for those who maybe don't understand it fully yet. You know, some people just, especially the newcomers, they ask me, it's like, hey, why, how do I get, um, how do I get the information from the blockchain? The blockchain is just out there, right? Um, how do I get the information? Of course, in order to get this information, you need to query a node. And these nodes are, um, you know, some of them are public, but most of them are really private. And mo more often than not, when you build your own application, you have to run your own node. Uh, a node is really just a server that runs the binary, that runs the chain. Um, and it just uh, synchronizes, uh, it gets all the transactions and it just synchronizes um, and executes the transactions. And, and because the blockchain is deterministic, um, everyone is always in sync in that sense. And there's no, yeah, there's no uh, variations between those. What's really important to know here, and this is something I think hasn't really been covered fully, is that most of the time when you're looking at nodes, you're looking at a pruned node. So what is a pruned node? It's a node that is pruned in its data. So if you look at the Cosmos Hub, for example, the Cosmos Hub itself is, I think, 1.4, 1.5 terabyte in size if you look at all the data that's in every block. So if, every, if somebody wants to run a node, you have to run 1.4 terabytes uh, of data. Basically, you have to have that for storage and probably a lot more in the future. And that's not something that we can really reasonably ask for every node operator. And it's also not the type of information that you really need. You don't necessarily need to know what the state of a blockchain was on block 100. right? You don't need to know that. You generally just want to know what is the current state of the blockchain and maybe the last couple of blocks. So pruning is a thing that you can set up in Tendermint that allows you to uh, basically just delete all the data after a certain time and you just have the most recent information. Uh, this is most of the time you'll find news that, uh, <laughs> certain nodes that are pruned. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so that's important to know because when you do um, connect to a node uh, and you do try to ask for information uh, from far in the past, you might get a wrong answer. You might get an answer. You might get a faulty result that doesn't really work. It's important to know that that's happening. So where can you find these nodes? Well, um, the nodes that we'll be using are public nodes for the testnet, and people don't really, um, you know, they don't really um, work on the, they don't really develop applications for the testnet. So these nodes are available. Um, I'll show you one later. It's also in the in the actual training program itself. You'll find them there. We'll be using one uh, that's being provided by Haifa. Um, but for public information, you also have. Um, uh, you, have, you have something called the chain registry for public nodes. These nodes are for development purposes, uh, purposes only, uh, but it's important to understand that the, this is here for you. So this is called the chain registry. This is just a repo with a whole bunch of information for every chain that sort of is out there currently. So we can look at uh, the Cosmos app, for example, and there's this chain.json file, and it contains all kinds of information about this chain. Um, uh, it contains all this information about which uh, binary is currently running, um, where you can download them, seat nodes to connect to, but also RPC endpoints so we can actually query some of the data, REST endpoints as well. These are public, but they're not meant for when you're building your application. If you build your application and you use one of these nodes and you're getting a lot of queries, and, and the node operator, they're going to find out and they're going to close the node because somebody's using it for the application, right? So it's not for that, but if you're building an application, you're testing 
by all means, use these nodes. If you want to build something on a different chain for Juno or Osmosis, by all means, just use any of these information. It's just called the chain registry. It's in the Cosmos organization. Um, but anyway, we're just using the testnet node. So let's set up the RPC client in Cosm.js itself. So as we notice, maybe we're using here an RPC URL. And where are we declaring that? We're declaring that an index.tx right over here. So what we do is we just copy the URL that we're actually going to be using, which is uh, this URL. This is just the uh, URL for uh, an RPC endpoint that connects to the, that is synchronized with the Cosmos Hub testnet. And let's just start by actually fetching some information from the actual Cosmos Hub testnet. And so what we do, we're just going to put this under the constructor. Uh, I'm going to put a bunch of code here and I'll go over it for you. What this does is it uh, asks the Stargate client, let me just make this a little smaller so you can read, and asks the Stargate client, which is the client that connects to the chain, to connect to the RPC endpoint. And then uh, there's this function called get chain ID. And get chain ID just like, checks the Stargate client, are we connected? And if so, can you please get the chain ID? And then we're going to set the state, we're going to set chain ID to C. Very simple. And now we have the chain ID. And um, actually, what we should probably also do is set a timeout. Um, I forgot that. Just to make sure that you know, if we wait too long, uh, things don't really go crazy. Um, and now, if we actually look at our situation here, and we refresh, you see now that it's pulling the theta testnet. It's pulling this from the blockchain. So let's get some uh, testnet tokens. Um, everyone is on Discord, right? I'm assuming everyone has Kepler installed already. Um, if not, just go ahead and install it um, at your own leisure. Uh, we're just going to have to request this from, uh, we have a faucet here. Uh, let's go find it. Testnet faucet. And I set up an address already, just a test address. And I'm just going to go ahead and request uh, from the theta testnet a bunch of tokens. And I should be getting a message that this was successful. Great. So now I have fake money. <laughs> and uh, that's really it. We're going to now try to connect to Kepler. Because right now, if we connect to our wallet, nothing really happens. And we have Kepler here. What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go and show you here. Um, we have a bunch of chains that come default in Kepler. Yeah. These are chains that Kepler decided, like, these are the ones that we want to support. They have nodes running for these, or maybe some other people have nodes running for these, and they can pull data from that. Um, but they also, um, they can also, you can also su suggest a chain to Kepler. You can say, hey, I'm building this chain. I know you don't support it yet. Let me go and add that. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to suggest the Cosmos has Hub testnet to Kepler. And in order to suggest that to Kepler, to, to sort of include that in our personal version of Kepler, uh, we need to give it some metadata. And in order to be, before we can even start doing that, of course, we need to install Kepler. So let's start with that. So we're going to just install uh, Kepler package here. Also, like if you do have a question in the meantime or anything, you, know, you can you can raise your hand. I'm happy to try to answer those. Um, but so far, this is all I think pretty rudimentary stuff, especially if you're familiar with um, TypeScript and all this stuff. We're just going to import um, uh, Kepler. We're going to declare it, and there's also this this uh, type here called chain info, which is that metadata that we're talking about um, that they need. So now that we have this imported, um, I'm going to just copy a whole bunch of metadata that we're not, we don't necessarily have to go over that uh, fully, but we're just going to copy that, um, put that under here. This is outdated, so I'm just going to remove that. What this does really is just, it's just, a, it just creates a chain info type with this information, the theta testnet, the RPC endpoint that we're talking about, also a rest point, a coin type, for those who don't know, um, Addresses on uh, from wallets are generated based on the mnemonic, right? And there is a, a key derivation path um, that is being used. And what is this? This is basically a bunch of uh, rules to, um, to, to to generate the address based on the mnemonic. And every chain has its own sort of coin type. And most Cosmos chains have the coin type 118. This is why um, you can use the same address uh, for us on osmosis 
on Juno, on Cosmos Hub, on all the other ones that use this coin type, because generally you have the same address. The only difference is that the prefix to the address is different. And in our case, it's the Cosmos prefix. That's what's referred to as BEC32. BEC32 is just, you take the public key, and then you convert that into a BEC32 address, meaning that you have a prefix, Cosmos, your address, and then a suffix, which is like a checksum, uh, which makes sure that your address is a valid address. And the other information that we give here are some of the currencies that the chain supports, um, uh, some of the fees, the, how you, what the fees are, um, what's used for staking, that kind of stuff, and which features are supporting IBC transfer. It's not really important that you know everything about it, I just want to go over it. Um, and then, of course, we need to connect the actual wallet uh, when the user clicks on the connect wallet button. So we have this function here, right, on Kepler click, which happens when you click on that button. So we're just going to replace that with, um, with a very simple thing here. So what this does, it just checks, do you have Kepler? If not, install it. If you do, go ahead and run the function that Kepler has, it's, which is called experimental suggest chain, pass it the metadata that we just uh, gave it, um, and then it will suggest the chain to Kepler. So let's try that, right? We have our interface here. Let me just refresh to be double sure. You connect wallet, and then we have this thing that Kepler asks, chain add request. Localhost, a local host wants you to add this specific uh, chain to Kepler. Let's do it. We approve it, and voila, we have our testnet. And then when we click on it, it's able to check the, the, the the RPC endpoint that we have, and it knows that we have 10 atom, and that it's worth this much because it thinks it's the real atom, but actually it's worth nothing at all. Um, so now that we're able to connect to Kepler, um, let's try to get our balance and you know, put that into our front end interface. So um, we probably should just do that on Kepler Click as well, because like once we actually connect to Kepler, it's also the right moment to actually start fetching that data, right? So I'm just going to copy again some code and we'll walk you through it. The reason why I do all this copying is because I don't want to make mistakes while I type stuff out. So we're getting a bunch of errors and we'll get to that a little, a little later. So this is uh, an interesting bit here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an offline signer. What's the offline signer? Well, in this case, um, that's that's the, the, the signer that we use, the client basically that we use to connect to Kepler uh, and to sign messages and transactions. Um, we're just going to create that. And we're going to um, also create the actual uh, Stargate client that we used before um, to pull the information from the chain ID that we used in the past. And we're going to connect over the RPC endpoint. Um, and then we're going to ask this offline signer to get the accounts that we have. So we're going to ask Kepler, tell me which accounts you have. And there's an array here because you can have multiple accounts. If you have multiple addresses, you can say, like, I want address number one, address number two, or whatever. You can get all the, all the addresses that the user has. And then we're going to set that to state. Um, because the account data is a type that contains uh, an address and uh, contains a bunch of other things. And we're going to then ask the chain again what my balance is. So we're going to ask the signing client, can you please get me the balance from my address that was part of the account data, data and please check um, the atom balance and give me the amount for that. Now, this isn't working uh, because we haven't imported the account data in the offline signer that is part of Cosm.js um, proto signing. So once we do that, it should be running. So let's give that a go. Yes. Uh, boom, there you go. It suddenly knows this is uh, this is the amount of, uh, this is our address, and it pulls from the chain what our balance is. Great. We're almost there. Um, it's actually not that much more work. So I think I'm doing it faster than, uh, than I initially planned for. But that means we have more time for questions probably. So what's left? Well, we want to be able to send these tokens, right? Uh, what are we going to send it to? Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, it's probably good to send it back to the faucet so we don't spend all these faucet tokens all the time. Um, so we're going to just replace that on send click uh, function. It's going to do a couple of things. Um, right now, it's doing nothing. It's just doing to do. And what it should be doing is it should get the current state of the form and the address um, that we input, where we want to send it to. It should create the offline signer and the signing client again. And it should get the account data. Uh, it should submit the transaction. And then it should, of course, update the balance in the user interface. So again, I will just copy the text, but also I'll give myself a little bit more water. And I just copy the code here for a second and run through it with y'all. 
So let's just replace that here. So on send click, um, we're just going to get the current state. So we have the state stored in state, um, and uh, or at least we have the state stored here. Sorry, we're going to store that to uh, state, and we're going to again create the offline signer with the RPC endpoint uh, here, just like we did when we got the information from our our, our, our wallet. We're going to get the account data again, um, and then we have the transaction. So the transaction is the results of that are stored in send result. And we're going to ask the sign client to send tokens, which is just a function that exists to send tokens. The send tokens needs a sending address, which is our account address that we got from Kepler. And it needs a, an, a, a recipient address, the two address in this case, um, that we stored um, because that's in the form here. And so currently that's empty, but we're storing it to state. And if we input that, the two address will change as well. And then it needs the um, denom and it needs the amount that we send. And then, of course, it needs some gas. Once that's done, or the transaction is sent, it will print the result to, uh, to our log. And then once that's done, it's going to set the state of um, our balance here to uh, an update of one of the queries from the chain. Uh, the reason why we do that is you, you could also just say, oh, you know what, I'm just going to deduct um, uh, this amount from the, uh, from the balance right, right away. But you don't want to do that because you want to wait for the transaction to either succeed or fail. And if, this question, if the transaction fails or if maybe there was some other thing, uh, that went wrong, you kind of want to check it on the blockchain and not just assume that it went right. As you can tell, I'm not doing a lot of error catching. This is really quick and dirty. I just wanted to make sure that the basic elements here are, are um, sort of explained. So um, let's give that a try now that we have this, right? So where do we want to send it to? Well, let's, well, first let's connect our wallet and let's send this to this address. This is the faucet address. I just want to send the tokens back, or at least some of them. Um, do you guys know the difference between you, Adam, and Adam? I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, the difference is, uh, I think it's like a million decimal point. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a decimal point. So basically, uh, Adam is just actually, I think like it's one million. Exactly, it's like micro Adam. That's one million, um, uh, one million you, Adam. This is important because, um, yeah, you want to get to the zero decimal point. So that's generally how it works on the back end side of things. So let's send it a bunch. Uh, we don't have to send everything. We should get a Kepler request here. And there you go. It was the 0 0.1 atom. Let's do it. Well, let's check our console actually. Oh, no. We actually got our result here already. Uh, this is our result. <laughs> Ignore the error here, my bad. Like I said, I'm not great. Life's good. Uh, this is the error. So let's look at that for a second because it's actually kind of interesting. When you start building your own applications and when you start sort of like messing around with Cosmos, you're going to have transactions that fail all the time. And um, you kind of want to figure out like why that's the case. And generally, when you get a transaction returned like this, uh, you can expect it. And when code is zero, um, nothing went wrong. Actually, it was successful. And it will give you some information about the transaction. You know, the gas that we actually used, the gas that uh, we wanted, or the height of the block, the actual um, event that was transmitted, um, and the transaction hash, and all this other information. Um, this is great. Uh, everything went fine. So we could even go to the Explorer and, um, and find it. In fact, I think if we go to Big Dipper Cosmos Hub Testnet, is it online? Uh, I think probably if we go to testnet dot. Is that correct? Yeah. So let's let's see if we can actually like find our transaction, right? Well, look, this is our address. We have ten atom. Now it's nine point eight um, nine point eight nine five. We can actually also, of course, just get the actual transaction hash, and then we get the actual. Um, transaction, and we see that you know we did uh, we paid this amount in atom, uh, we transferred some some atom, uh, zero point one to heart. Why does it say heart? Because heart happens to be the validator, and the validator is called heart. Um, so it's just a coincidence. Um, so anyway, that's a confirmation. We did it. We created a very 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 simple uh, transaction. Uh, uh, sorry, interface. We pulled some data from the chain. We pulled some data from Kepler. Um, we were able to send tokens, and we were able to connect to these wallets and suggest a wallet to Kepler. Now you can do a whole bunch of things, and you can expand, right? This is sort of where it's up to you to sort of start doing the more interesting things. Um, 
what you'll be doing uh, this week is mostly this. Um, what, what you'll be doing in week five, so that's uh, not next week, but the week after that, you'll be um, creating a user interface for your checkers game, um, meaning that you'll have a graphical interface to do the checkers um, moves, but also you'll be sending transactions um, like player move and uh, create game and these kinds of things. And for that, you're going to need to create your own messages, right? So send tokens is something that is available on all the chains that are built with Cosmos, right? As well as, uh, well, most chains have some kind of a governance messaging or most chains have uh, staking, right? These things are all standard, but a checkers game, um, Cosmos doesn't understand that. So you're gonna have to create your own, uh, you're gonna have to generate your own um, uh, codex for that and your own types. Um, and so that tutorial covers that a little bit and then it covers um, you know, how to build that checkers interface. Um, yeah, so that's it. And I just have some final things. Um, like I said, this is sort of like the lower level version of um, of, of, of front end development. Um, what's actually being ha what's happening right now is that people are starting to build uh, abstraction layers on top of Cosm JS that make this process a little easier, that make it easier in two ways. It, uh, for example, if you look at something like Telescope, which is something here, which I think you should look at once you're done with the training program. This is really cool. Telescope is basically an abstraction layer that allows you uh, to generate your codex on the fly. It's, uh, it's really quick doing that, it's really friendly. Uh, but also it makes the actual front-end application development a lot easier. Um, it, you don't have to constantly create these, uh, these signers, for example. Um, you don't have to, uh, you know, the transaction creating them is a lot easier. It's just like a function instead of having to build your own transaction and sending that to the, to the signing client. Um, highly recommend you check this out once you're done with the training program. Um, the reason why we're going for Cosmic GS is because we want to give you guys that lower level understanding, especially as chain developers, that you need to understand there's this thing called Cosmic GS and people are going to be using this uh, to build front end applications. Um, uh, but yeah, check this out if you're just a front end developer. This would like, make your life a lot easier, um, as well as uh, the Create Cosmos app, which is uh, made by the same uh, team. Um, this is a team being run by Dan Lynch. If you guys are on Twitter, I would highly recommend you follow Dan Lynch. He's called, I'm just going to put that in the check, uh, chat. So I'm just going to actually put these links in the chat also. Uh, let me actually find it real quick. Is it? Yeah, there you go. Put this right here. So follow this guy. If you're into front-end development, check out Telescope and create Cosmos app. This is all good stuff for when you're done with this with the training program here. So have a look at those. And again, also for the notes, just so that everyone has all the links, the chain registry, if you want to have development notes available to you. Um, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, this is your moment. Um, thanks for spending time here. I hope it wasn't too simple. I think for a lot of people, this might have been too simple. <laughs> but uh, I think it's a great way to sort of get started. And I'll stop sharing my screen. And uh, Abhishek, if I hope you pronounce your name correctly, please feel free to ask the question. Uh, hey, Noam. Uh, thanks for the yeah. session. Uh, You're welcome. Great, Hi. as always. So I do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first of them would be that if I make an application, how do mm -hmm. I get my uh, testnet registered to the Cosmos chain registry? How do you get your chain or your, your chain registered to the registry? Right now, um, you would actually just create a PR. So this is open. You just create a PR uh, in the repo and just submit your um, chain.json file. In the future, the Cosmos Hub will likely um, have this on chain. And so your chain would use um, various means to, to connect to Cosmos Hub and then submit it to IBC. But for now, just use the repo. OK. Uh, my second question is that uh, which coin types on Cosmos support ledgers? It's ledger support, yeah. Um, right, yeah, only actually 118. So the coin type, you mean like the number, the derivation number? The one that we yeah. saw in the, uh, yeah, uh, only 118 at the moment. Uh, there's some conversation about opening that up. Uh, but this is why it's actually beneficial for your application to actually use 118 as coin type. Um, because Ledger doesn't really yet understand um, if, if somebody else comes in and uses, I don't know, 3,000, whatever, uh, as a coin type, it doesn't understand that. Um, I'm not sure if there's if they have decided yet on, um, on on including that. I don't think that's the case yet. So if I would recommend every Cosmos chain for now to just use um, 
118. It's the easiest way. Kepler supports it easily, and then Ledger supports it. OK, and uh, I have one last question. Uh, mm -hmm. That if I'm performing some action that requires me to save some metadata, say, to the state of my chain, and let's say I need to get an OTZ grant on another chain, mm -hmm. is it possible to connect both chains at once, connect to both chains at once using Cosm.js, like we just saw how we connected to the Theta? Yeah. Like? Yeah, you can. You would just, instead of the one RPC URL, you would just create two variables, two RPC URLs, uh, and uh, you know, one for the chain A and one for chain B. And then you would have to create uh, multiple signing clients and just uh, have them run at the same time. You can do that. OK, thanks. That because most of the yeah. yeah. Because most of the apps that I've used, like, they usually when, like, let's say, um, yield moss, for example. So it requires mm -hmm. you to switch chains when you're uh, Changing, you know, like when you're staking on, when you're auto compounding on different chains. That's why I wanted to ask that. Because I yeah, plan yeah, to that's... do some metadata for like the future users of my chain. I don't think I, I quite got the last question. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, um, that. that's, that's all it was. I think you answered it perfectly. Oh. As long as okay, perfect. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. You can just connect to multiple chains at the same time, um, or just have that sort of dynamically happen, um, for sure. And that's also the thing, like one of the things that I think uh, would be great if we can get to a point where we have actually public notes available. Um, well, what, what we're seeing right now, we have uh, some of the front applications that we're building um, at, at uh, Strangelove, for example, or at Region, um, they're building applications that, that ICF is currently paying for. Um, and they are building uh, the app that has sort of like a chain select option, which interfaces with the chain registry. Uh, but this is just for development purposes only at the moment, because we, of course these are not public nodes, and these nodes will will, will be completely uh, overloaded if every application uses them. But like I can actually show you maybe real quick. There's like this multi-sig application that's sort of currently being demoed. Uh, maybe it's kind of cool to look at it to see what you can do. Um, here we go. Let me try to share my screen again. So excuse the uh, beautifully purple color. <laughs> so this is, I, I would not suggest anyone to use this right yet because there's still a bunch of uh, things that we're working out with this application. Uh, but this is a multi-sig manager uh, that uses the multi-sig thing. And actually what it does here, it pulls all this data from the chain registry. And then it just like, because this is a development uh, version still, it just like you can connect to, I don't know, probably osmosis here. Um, and it just pulls the nodes from osmosis, gets all the information that it needs. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It manages to figure it out. And then it says there are multiple DNOM tokens, so you have to manually input some, some DNOM, so probably something like this. Um, and, uh, and then it will be able to figure it out. And I think that would be really cool. I think the future is multi-chain or interchain, if you want to call it that. And uh, I'm just waiting for sort of like front-end tools to sort of like become standardized components that you can use to start interfacing with the, with the multi-chain. Thanks for uh, sharing that. Is it if the repo is open? Could you please share the link as well? The multi-sig one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to have a look at it, sure. Um, let me see. I think it's open. I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah, just so you know, this is like better. Don't use this in production. But you can learn a lot from this for sure. Cool. Excellent. Any other questions? Bradley, go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, I was just wondering if you could uh, kind of go over uh, what you would need to do for adding queries uh, within Cosm.js for uh, custom defined types. Yeah, so that's actually uh, quite a lot of work, uh, depending on how you do it, right? So the way that, um, so actually this is a tutorial that we're, that's part of the training program. Um, I think this is in week five. There is a part that says creating custom objects and creating custom messages. Um, that covers that completely. And there's two ways to do it. We're covering the one where you use ProTalk, which basically generates the codex based on the protobuf. So basically, you point to the protobuf files that have your messages, and then um, it generates um, these types for you. What you can also do, um, and I think this is probably, this is relatively new, and I think this is the future of front-end development, you can use Telescope for that. And Telescope is just like a, 
um, is a is a it's just a prompt and it just says like where are your protofiles cool let me go generate the uh, pro uh, the codex for them and also let me generate the amino uh, types for them or at least the, so that ledger supports it um so yeah have a look at those I, I don't think i can really cover that right now in the few minutes that we have left because that process is is, uh, is quite extensive um, okay. hope that answers your question yeah thanks cool uh anyone else Oh, I see uh, Seth asked the question, are the chains on the chain registry only public chains or also private ones? As far as I'm aware, these are public chains. I, if it's a private chain, I guess you don't really want to have it in the chain registry because like once you put, you know, nodes up, well, I mean, it could still be a private chain, I guess, but uh, if you have the nodes up, why would you if it's a private chain, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, I don't think you'll find the private ones. Um, definitely want to make sure that there's not a lot of bloat there. So there's a bunch of people sort of like making sure that the chain that you submit there is, of course, a running chain and not like just a little test that you built. Um, the purpose of that thing is to, you know, make sure that these are serious chains that have longevity in mind that are being maintained and whatnot. Uh, Abhi Ishek also uh, asked if the newest, or he said, uh, the newest version of Ignite generates a TS client directory, which has a lot of custom module specific stuff. Is that relevant for the same? Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I don't know. Um, so I actually wouldn't be able to answer that question. Unfortunately, I would recommend you ask that question in the Ignite Discord or actually in um, our Discord. But the the Interchain Developer Academy, as you might understand, like for us to update constantly um, the content to the latest version of it, all the different things, the SDK, IBC, Ignite, Tendermint, CosmJS, it's very difficult for us to keep up. So we're always just one or two versions sort of behind, which I think is good because it trialed and tested uh, uh, versions that we know that they work. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to answer that question, unfortunately. Is there also a Dart and Flutter, a Dart Flutter version of CosmJS? Ah, what was this again? There was something. Um, Cosmos awesome list. Do we have it somewhere? I think in the awesome list. Oh, this is by the way something I just everyone should just check check out. Uh, you can scaffold that with Ignite. Cool. You know more than me. Uh, that's that's great. Um, there, I think there was something about Dart, but. Uh, that's 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 not there anymore. I remember that was something there, but I think it's kind of out of date and not really being maintained. So unfortunately, that's all I know. I fell. Any other questions? I can also answer a, a bit more broader questions, perhaps um, Cosmos in general, not necessarily Cosmos JS. If anyone has anything or some high-level stuff. They're interested into knowing. Cool. Well, was this useful? Can I get a thumbs up if it was? Was it uh, too simple? Was it too complicated? Um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat if you feel like it. There was one more question. I can't actually see who it was, unfortunately, but feel free to speak up. Or was that just a thumbs up? All right, I got you. Thanks. Cool, cool, cool. Well, if anyone has any other questions, it was short. Um, I hope it was useful. But if anyone has any more questions, feel free to let me know. And otherwise, I'll give you back the last uh, eight minutes. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Thank you all. Thanks so much for spending the time with me. And uh, glad to hear it was helpful.